Proto-Slavic is the unattested, reconstructed proto-language of all the Slavic languages. It represents Slavic speech approximately from the 5th to 9th centuries AD. As with most other proto-languages, no attested writings have been found. Scholars have reconstructed the language by applying the comparative method to all the attested Slavic languages and by taking into account other Indo-European languages. Rapid development of Slavic speech occurred during the Proto-Slavic period, coinciding with the massive expansion of the Slavic speaking area. Dialectal differentiation occurred early on during this period, but overall linguistic unity and mutual intelligibility continued for several centuries, into the 10th century or later. During this period, many sound changes diffused across the entire area, often uniformly. This makes it inconvenient to maintain the traditional definition of a proto-language as the latest reconstructable common ancestor of a language group, with no dialectal differentiation. This would necessitate treating all pan-Slavic changes after the 6th century or so as part of the separate histories of the various daughter languages. Instead, Slavicists typically handle the entire period of dialectally differentiated linguistic unity as common Slavic. One can divide the Proto-Slavic, Common Slavic time of linguistic unity roughly into three periods. An early period with little or no dialectal variation. A middle period of slight to moderate dialectal variation. A late period of significant variation. Authorities differ as to which periods should be included in Proto-Slavic and in Common Slavic. The language described in this article generally reflects the Middle Period, usually termed Late Proto-Slavic sometimes Middle Common Slavic and often dated to around the 7th to 8th centuries. This language remains largely unattested, but a Late Period variant, representing the late 9th century dialect spoken around Thessaloniki in Greek Macedonia, is attested in Old Church Slavonic manuscripts. Introduction The ancestor of Proto-Slavic is Proto-Balto-Slavic, which is also the ancestor of the Baltic languages, e.g. Lithuanian and Latvian. This language in turn is descended from Proto-Indo-European, the parent language of the vast majority of European languages including English, Irish, Spanish, Greek, etc. Proto-Slavic gradually evolved into the various Slavic languages during the latter half of the first millennium AD, concurrent with the explosive growth of the Slavic-speaking area. There is no scholarly consensus concerning either the number of stages involved in the development of the language its periodization or the terms used to describe them. For consistency and convenience, this article adopts the following scheme as does the article History of the Slavic Languages, which see for further discussion of the historical and linguistic development of Proto-Slavic from Proto-Balto-Slavic, and the further development of Proto-Slavic into the modern Slavic languages. Proto-Slavic is divided into periods. One division is made up of three periods Early Proto-Slavic until 1000 BC Middle Proto-Slavic 1000 BC, AD 1 Late Proto-Slavic AD 1 to 600 Another division is made up of four periods Pre-Slavic c. 1500 BC, AD 300, a long, stable period of gradual development the most significant phonological developments during this period involved the prosodic system, e.g. tonal and other register distinctions on syllables. Early Common Slavic or simply Early Slavic c. 300-600, the early, uniform stage of Common Slavic, but also the beginning of a longer period of rapid phonological change. As there are no dialectal distinctions reconstructable from this period or earlier, this is the period for which a single common ancestor that is, Proto-Slavic proper can be reconstructed. Middle Common Slavic, c. 600 to 800, the stage with the earliest identifiable dialectal distinctions. Rapid phonological change continued, although with the massive expansion of the Slavic speaking area. Although some dialectal variation did exist, most sound changes were still uniform and consistent in their application. By the end of this stage, the vowel and consonant phonemes of the language were largely the same as those still found in the modern languages. For this reason, reconstructed Proto-Slavic forms commonly found in scholarly works and etymological dictionaries normally correspond to this period. Late Common Slavic c. 800-1000, although perhaps through c. 
1150 in Kievan Rus, in the far northeast, the last stage in which the whole Slavic-speaking area still functioned as a single language, with sound changes normally propagating throughout the entire area, although often with significant dialectal variation in the details. This article considers primarily Middle Common Slavic, noting when there is slight dialectal variation. It also covers Late Common Slavic when there are significant developments that are shared more or less identically among all Slavic languages. Notation Vowel notation Two different and conflicting systems for denoting vowels are commonly in use in Indo-European and Balto-Slavic linguistics on one hand, and Slavic linguistics on the other. In the first, vowel length is consistently distinguished with a macron above the letter, while in the latter it is not clearly indicated. The following table explains these differences. For consistency, all discussions of words in early Slavic and before the boundary corresponding roughly to the monophthongization of diphthongs, and the Slavic second palatalization use the common Balto-Slavic notation of vowels. Discussions of Middle and Late Common Slavic, as well as later dialects, use the Slavic notation. Other vowel and consonant diacritics The hotchik on consonants dlnrst is used in this article to denote the consonants that result from iotation coalescence with a, j, that previously followed the consonant and the Slavic first palatalization. This use is based on the Czech alphabet, and is shared by most Slavic languages and linguistic explanations about Slavic. The acute accent on the consonant indicates a special, more frontal, hissing sound. The acute is used in several other Slavic languages such as Polish, Serbo-Croatian and Macedonian to denote a similar frontal quality to a consonant. The ogonic indicates vowel nasalization. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Prosodic notation. For Middle and Late Common Slavic, the following marks are used to indicate tone and length distinctions on vowels, based on the standard notation in Serbo-Croatian. Acute accent A acute, a long rising accent, originating from the Balto-Slavic acute accent. This occurred in the Middle Common Slavic period and earlier. Grave accent A grave, a short rising accent. It occurred from late Common Slavic onwards, and developed from the shortening of the original acute long rising tone. Inverted breve, a long falling accent, originating from the Balto Slavic circumflex accent. In late Common Slavic, originally short falling vowels were lengthened in monosyllables under some circumstances, and are also written with this mark. This secondary circumflex occurs only on the original short vowels e, o, in an open syllable, i.e., when not forming part of a liquid diphthong. Double grave accent, a short falling accent. It corresponds to the Balto Slavic short accent. All short vowels that were not followed by a sonorant consonant originally carried this accent, until some were lengthened. See preceding item. Tilde a tilde, usually a long rising accent. This indicates the late common Slavic neoacute accent, which was usually long, but short when occurring on some syllables types in certain languages. It resulted from retraction of the accent movement towards an earlier syllable under certain circumstances, often when the middle common Slavic accent fell on a word final final er asterisk, i or asterisk, u. Macron, a long vowel with no distinctive tone. In middle common Slavic, vowel length was an implicit part of the vowel asterisk e, asterisk o, asterisk, asterisk, are inherently short, all others are inherently long, so this is usually redundant for middle common Slavic words. However, it became distinctive in late common Slavic after several shortenings and lengthenings had occurred. Topic: Other prosodic diacritics. There are unfortunately multiple competing systems used to indicate prosody in different Balto-Slavic languages. See Proto-Balto-Slavic language hashtag notation for more details. The most important for this article are. Three-way system of Proto-Slavic, Proto-Balto-Slavic, Modern Lithuanian, acute tone A acute versus circumflex tone or A tilde versus short accent A grave. Four-way Serbo-Croatian system, also used in Slovenian and often in Slavic reconstructions, long rising A acute, short rising A grave, long falling, short falling. 
In the Chakavian dialect and other archaic dialects, the long rising accent is notated with a tilde a tilde, indicating its normal origin in the late common Slavic neoacute accent. See above. Length only, as in Czech and Slovak, long a acute versus short a. Stress only, as in Ukrainian, Russian, and Bulgarian, stressed a acute versus unstressed a. Topic: History. Topic: Phonology. The following is an overview of the phonemes that are reconstructable for Middle Common Slavic. Topic: Vowels. Middle Common Slavic had the following vowel system: the columns marked central and back may alternatively be interpreted as back unrounded and back rounded respectively but rounding of back vowels was distinctive only between the vowels asterisk y and asterisk u the other back vowels had optional non distinctive rounding thus the vowels described as short and long were simultaneously distinguished by length and quality in middle common slavic vowel length evolved as follows in the early Slavic period, length was the primary distinction as indicated, for example, by Greek transcriptions of Slavic words, or early loanwords from Slavic into the Finnic languages. In the Middle Common Slavic period, all long, short vowel pairs also assumed distinct qualities, as indicated above. During the late Common Slavic period, various lengthenings and shortenings occurred, creating new long counterparts of originally short vowels, and short counterparts of originally long vowels e.g. long asterisk o, short asterisk a. The short close vowels asterisk i and asterisk u were either lost or lowered to mid vowels, leaving the originally long high vowels asterisk i, asterisk y and asterisk u with non-distinctive length. As a result, vowel quality became the primary distinction among the vowels, while length became conditioned by accent and other properties and was not a lexical property inherent in each vowel. Many modern Slavic languages have since lost all length distinctions. Some authors avoid the terms short and long using lax and tense instead. Topic: Consonants. Middle Common Slavic had the following consonants The phonetic value IPA symbol of most consonants is the same as their traditional spelling. Some notes and exceptions Asterisk C denotes a voiceless alveolar affricate T, S. Asterisk DZ was its voiced counterpart D, Z. Asterisk S and asterisk Z were postalveolar, and Asterisk C and asterisk Ds were postalveolar affricates, T, and D, although the latter only occurred in the combination asterisk zeds and had developed into asterisk z elsewhere. The pronunciation of asterisk t and asterisk d is not precisely known, though it is likely that they were held longer geminate. They may have been palatalized dentals t -d, or perhaps true palatal c, as in modern Macedonian. The exact value of asterisk s is also unknown but usually presumed to be or s. It was rare, only occurring before front vowels from the second palatalization of asterisk x, and it merged with asterisk s in West Slavic and asterisk s in the other branches. Asterisk v was a labial approximant. It may have had bilabial w as an allophone in certain positions as in modern Slovene and Ukrainian. Asterisk l was l. Before back vowels, it was probably fairly strongly velarized, in many dialects. The sonorants asterisk l asterisk n were either palatalized ln or true palatal. The pronunciation of asterisk r is not precisely known, but it was approximately a palatalized trill r. In all daughter languages except Slovenian it either merged with asterisk r southwest Slavic or with the palatalized asterisk r resulting from asterisk r before front vowels elsewhere. The resulting asterisk r merged back into asterisk r in some languages, but remained distinct in Czech becoming a fricative trill, denoted in spelling, in Old Polish it subsequently merged with asterisk z but continues to be spelled rz, although some dialects have kept a distinction to this day, especially among the elderly, in Russian except when preceding a consonant, and in Bulgarian when preceding a vowel, in most dialects, non-distinctive palatalization was probably present on all consonants that occurred before front vowels. 
When the high front er asterisk i was lost in many words, it left this palatalization as a residue, which then became distinctive, producing a phonemic distinction between palatalized and non-palatalized alveolars and labials. In the process, the palatal sonorants asterisk l asterisk n asterisk r merged with alveolar asterisk l asterisk n asterisk r before front vowels, with both becoming asterisk l asterisk n asterisk r. Subsequently, some palatalized consonants lost their palatalization in some environments, merging with their non-palatal counterparts. This happened the least in Russian and the most in Czech. Palatalized consonants never developed in Southwest Slavic modern Croatian, Serbian, and Slovenian, and the merger of asterisk L asterisk N asterisk R with asterisk L asterisk N asterisk R did not happen before front vowels although Serbian and Croatian later merged asterisk R with asterisk R. Topic. Pitch accent As in its ancestors, Proto-Balto-Slavic and Proto-Indo-European, one syllable of each common Slavic word was accented carried more prominence. The placement of the accent was free and thus phonemic, it could occur on any syllable and its placement was inherently part of the word. The accent could also be either mobile or fixed, meaning that inflected forms of a word could have the accent on different syllables depending on the ending, or always on the same syllable. Common Slavic vowels also had a pitch accent. In Middle Common Slavic, all accented long vowels, nasal vowels and liquid diphthongs had a distinction between two pitch accents, traditionally called acute and circumflex accent. The acute accent was pronounced with rising intonation, while the circumflex accent had a falling intonation. Short vowels asterisk e asterisk o asterisk asterisk had no pitch distinction, and were always pronounced with falling intonation. Unaccented unstressed vowels never had tonal distinctions, but could still have length distinctions. These rules are similar to the restrictions that apply to the pitch accent in Slovene. In the late common Slavic period, several sound changes occurred. Long vowels bearing the acute long rising accent were usually shortened, resulting in a short rising intonation. Some short vowels were lengthened, creating new long falling vowels. A third type of pitch accent developed, known as the neoacute, as a result of sound laws that retracted the accent moved it to the preceding syllable. This occurred at a time when the Slavic speaking area was already dialectally differentiated, and usually syllables with the acute and or circumflex accent were shortened around the same time. Hence it is unclear whether there was ever a period in any dialect when there were three phonemically distinct pitch accents on long vowels. Nevertheless, taken together, these changes significantly altered the distribution of the pitch accents and vowel length, to the point that by the end of the late common Slavic period almost any vowel could be short or long, and almost any accented vowel could have falling or rising pitch. Topic. Phonotactics Most syllables in Middle Common Slavic were open. The only closed syllables were those that ended in a liquid asterisk l or asterisk r, forming liquid diphthongs, and in such syllables, the preceding vowel had to be short. Consonant clusters were permitted, but only at the beginning of a syllable. Such a cluster was syllabified with the cluster entirely in the following syllable, contrary to the syllabification rules that are known to apply to most languages. For example, asterisk bogat, stvo, wealth was divided into syllables as asterisk boga t, stvo, with the whole cluster asterisk stv at the beginning of the syllable. By the beginning of the late common Slavic period, all or nearly all syllables had become open as a result of developments in the liquid diphthongs. Syllables with liquid diphthongs beginning with asterisk o or asterisk e had been converted into open syllables, for example asterisk tort became asterisk trot, asterisk trat or asterisk torat in the various daughter languages. The main exception are the northern Lechitic languages Kashubian, extinct Slovenian and Polabian only with lengthening of the syllable and no metathesis asterisk tart, e.g. PSL, asterisk gord, greater than Kashubian gard, greater than Polabian asterisk gard greater than gord. In West Slavic and South Slavic, liquid diphthongs beginning with asterisk, or asterisk, had likewise been converted into open syllables by converting the following liquid into a syllabic sonorant, palatal or non-palatal according to whether asterisk, or asterisk, proceeded respectively. This left no closed syllables at all in these languages. 
The South Slavic languages, as well as Czech and Slovak, tended to preserve the syllabic sonorants, but in the Lechitic languages such as Polish, they fell apart again into vowel consonant or consonant vowel combinations. In East Slavic, the liquid diphthongs in asterisk, or asterisk, may have likewise become syllabic sonorants, but if so, the change was soon reversed, suggesting that it may never have happened in the first place. <laughs> Grammar Proto-Slavic retained several of the grammatical categories inherited from Proto-Indo-European, especially in nominals nouns and adjectives. Seven of the eight Indo-European cases had been retained nominative, accusative, locative, genitive, dative, instrumental, vocative. The ablative had merged with the genitive. It also retained full use of the singular, dual and plural numbers, and still maintained a distinction between masculine, feminine and neuter gender. However, verbs had become much more simplified, but displayed their own unique innovations. Topic. Alternations As a result of the three palatalizations and the fronting of vowels before palatal consonants, both consonant and vowel alternations were frequent in paradigms, as well as in word derivation. The following table lists various consonant alternations that occurred in Proto-Slavic, as a result of various suffixes or endings being attached to stems. Carat 1 originally formed a diphthong with the preceding vowel, which then became a long monophthong. Squared forms a nasal vowel. Cubed forms a liquid diphthong. Vowels were fronted when following a palatal or soft consonant asterisk j, any iotated consonant, or a consonant that had been affected by the progressive palatalization. Because of this, most vowels occurred in pairs, depending on the preceding consonant. The distinction between asterisk and asterisk is based on etymology and have different effects on a preceding consonant. Asterisk triggers the first palatalization and then becomes asterisk a, while asterisk triggers the second palatalization and does not change. Word final asterisk un and asterisk in lost nasal and became asterisk u and asterisk i rather than forming a nasal vowel, so that nasal vowels formed medially only. This explains the double reflex. Asteriska and asterisk and apparently did not take part in the fronting of back vowels, or in any case the effect was not visible. Both have the same reflex regardless of the preceding consonant, most word stems therefore became classed as either soft or hard, depending on whether their endings used soft fronted vowels or the original hard vowels. Hard stems displayed consonant alternations before endings with front vowels as a result of the two regressive palatalizations and iotation. As part of its Indo-European heritage, Proto-Slavic also retained oblaut alternations, although these had been reduced to unproductive relics. The following table lists the combinations vowel softening may alter the outcomes. Although qualitative alternations e -grade versus o -grade versus zero -grade were no longer productive, the Balto-Slavic languages had innovated a new kind of oblaut, in which length was the primary distinction. This created two new alternation patterns, which did not exist in pi, short asterisk e, asterisk o, asterisk, asterisk, versus long asterisk e, asterisk a, asterisk i, asterisk y. This type of alternation may have still been productive in Proto-Slavic, as a way to form imperfective verbs from perfective ones. Topic. Nouns Most of the Proto-Indo-European declensional classes were retained. Some, such as U stems and masculine I stems, were gradually falling out of use and being replaced by other, more productive classes. Topic. Adjectives Adjective inflection had become more simplified compared to Proto-Indo-European. Only a single paradigm in both hard and soft form existed, descending from the pi o and a stem inflection. I stem and u stem adjectives no longer existed. The present participle from pi asterisk nt still retained consonant stem endings. Proto-Slavic had developed a distinction between indefinite and definite adjective inflection, much like Germanic strong and weak inflection. The definite inflection was used to refer to specific or known entities, similar to the use of the definite article the in English, while the indefinite inflection was unspecific or referred to unknown or arbitrary entities, like the English indefinite article a. 
The indefinite inflection was identical to the inflection of o and a stem nouns, while the definite inflection was formed by suffixing the relative, anaphoric pronoun asterisk j to the end of the normal inflectional endings. Both the adjective and the suffixed pronoun were presumably declined as separate words originally, but already within Proto-Slavic they had become contracted and fused to some extent. Topic verbs The Proto-Slavic system of verbal inflection was somewhat simplified from the verbal system of Proto-Indo-European although it was still rich in tenses, conjugations and verb-forming suffixes. Topic grammatical categories The pi medio passive voice disappeared entirely except for the isolated form veda I know in Old Church Slavonic in terms of pi tense, aspect forms, the pi imperfect was lost or merged with the pi thematic aorist, and the pi perfect was lost other than in the stem of the irregular verb asterisk vedeti to know from pi asterisk void. The aorist was retained, preserving the pi thematic and sigmatic aorist types the former is generally termed the root aorist in Slavic studies, and a new productive aorist arose from the sigmatic aorist by various analogical changes, e.g. replacing some of the original endings with thematic endings. A similar development is observed in Greek and Sanskrit. In all three cases, the likely trigger was the phonological reduction of clusters like asterisk ss, asterisk street that arose when the original athematic endings were attached to the sigmatic asterisk s affix. A new synthetic imperfect was created by attaching a combination of the root and productive aorist endings to a stem suffix asterisk aa or asterisk a, of disputed origin. Various compound tenses were created, e.g. to express the future, conditional, perfect and pluperfect. The three numbers singular, dual and plural were all maintained, as were the different athematic and thematic endings. Only five athematic verbs exist, asterisk videti, to know, asterisk bythi, to be, asterisk daddy, to give, asterisk esti, to eat, and asterisk j, medi, to have. Asterisk daddy has a finite stem asterisk dad, suggesting derivation by some sort of reduplication, a new set of semi-thematic. Endings were formed by analogy corresponding to modern conjugation class 2, combining the thematic first singular ending with otherwise athematic endings. Proto-Slavic also maintained a large number of non-finite formations, including the infinitive, the supine, a verbal noun, and five participles present active, present passive, past active, past passive and resultative. In large measure these directly continue pi formations. Topic. Aspect. Proto-Indo-European had an extensive system of aspectual distinctions. Present versus aorist versus perfect in traditional terminology, found throughout the system. Proto-Slavic maintained part of this, distinguishing between aorist and imperfect in the past tense. In addition, Proto-Slavic evolved a means of forming lexical aspect verbs inherently marked with a particular aspect using various prefixes and suffixes, which was eventually extended into a systematic means of specifying grammatical aspect using pairs of related lexical verbs, each with the same meaning as the other but inherently marked as either imperfective denoting an ongoing action or perfective denoting a completed action. The two sets of verbs interrelate in three primary ways. A suffix is added to a more basic perfective verb to form an imperfective verb. A prefix is added to a more basic imperfective verb possibly the output of the previous step to form a perfective verb. Often, multiple perfective verbs can be formed this way using different prefixes, one of which echoes the basic meaning of the source verb while the others add various shades of meaning cf. English. Write. Versus. Write down. Versus. Write up. Versus. Write out. The two verbs are suppletive, either based on two entirely different roots, or derived from different pi verb classes of the same root, often with root vowel changes going back to pi oblaut formations. In Proto-Slavic and Old Church Slavonic, the old and new aspect systems coexisted, but the new aspect has gradually displaced the old one, and as a result, most modern Slavic languages have lost the old imperfect, aorist, and most participles. A major exception, however, is Bulgarian and also Macedonian to a fair extent, which has maintained both old and new systems and combined them to express fine shades of aspectual meaning. For example, in addition to imperfective imperfect forms and perfective aorist forms, Bulgarian can form a perfective imperfect usually expressing a repeated series of completed actions considered subordinate to the major past actions and an imperfective aorist for major 
Past events whose completion is not relevant to the narration, Proto-Slavic also had paired motion verbs e.g. run, walk, swim, fly, but also ride, carry, lead, chase, etc. One of the pair expresses determinate action motion to a specified place, e.g. I walked to my friend's house and the other expressing indeterminate action motion to and then back, and motion without a specified goal, these pairs are generally related using either the suffixing or suppletive strategies of forming aspectual verbs. Each of the pair is also in fact a pair of perfective versus imperfective verbs, where the perfective variant often uses a prefix asterisk po. Topic. Conjugation Many different pi verb classes were retained in Proto-Slavic, including among others, simple thematic presents, presents in asterisk n and asterisk y, stative verbs in asterisk e, cf, similar verbs in the Latin air conjugation, factative verbs in asterisk a, cf, the Latin r conjugation, and o grade causatives in asterisk a. -ye. The forms of each verb were based on two basic stems, one for the present and one for the infinitive past. The present stem was used before endings beginning in a vowel, the infinitive, past stem before endings beginning in a consonant. In Old Church Slavonic grammars, verbs are traditionally divided into four or five conjugation classes, depending on the present stem, known as Leskian's verb classes. However, this division ignores the formation of the infinitive stem. The following table shows the main classes of verbs in Proto-Slavic, along with their traditional OCS conjugation classes. The present column shows the ending of the third person singular present topic <inaudible> accent classes originally in balto slavic there were only two accent classes baritonic with fixed stem accent and mobile with mobile accent corresponding to slavic classes a and c there was no class with fixed accent on the ending both classes originally had both acute and circumflex stems in them after the operation of Debose law, three basic accent classes emerged for nominals, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, participles. Class A, with a fixed accent on the stem, either on the root or on a morphological suffix. Class B, with largely fixed accent on the ending, on the first syllable of the ending, if multisyllabic. Class C, mobile. With alternation of the accent between the first syllable of the stem and the ending, depending on the paradigmatic form, for this purpose, the stem includes any morphological suffixes e.g. a diminutive suffix, but not generally on the inflectional suffix that indicates the word class e.g. the a of feminine a stem nouns, which is considered part of the ending. Verbs also had three accent classes a, b and c with similar characteristics to the corresponding noun classes. However, the situation is somewhat more complicated due to the large number of verb stem classes and the numerous forms in verbal paradigms. Due to the way in which the accent classes arose, there are certain restrictions. In class A, the accented syllable always had the acute tone, and therefore was always long, because short syllables did not have tonal distinctions. Thus, single-syllable words with an originally short vowel asterisk e, asterisk o, asterisk, asterisk, in the stem could not belong to accent class A if the stem was multisyllabic, the accent could potentially fall on any stem syllable e.g. asterisk jzk, tongue. These restrictions were caused by Debose law, which moved the accent one syllable to the right, but only in originally baritonic stem accented nominals that did not have acute accent in the stem. Class A thus consists of the leftover words that Debose law did not affect. In class B, the stem syllables could be either short or long. In class C, in forms where the accent fell on the stem and not the ending, that syllable was either circumflex or short accented, never acute accented. This is due to Meillet's law, which converted an acute accent to a circumflex accent if it fell on the stem in class C nominals. Thus, Debose law did not affect nouns with a mobile accent paradigm. This is unlike Lithuanian, where Leskian's law, a law similar to Debo's law split both fixed and mobile paradigms in the same way, creating four classes. 
Consequently, circumflex or short accent on the first syllable could only occur in class C. In class A, it did not occur by definition, while in class B, the accent always shifted forward by Debo's law. Some nouns, especially ya stem nouns, fit into the class A pattern but have neoacute accent on the stem, which can have either a short or a long syllable. A standard example is asterisk vola, will, with neoacute accent on a short syllable. These nouns earlier belonged to class B. As a result, grammars may treat them as belonging either to classes A or B. During the late Common Slavic period, the class B paradigm became mobile as a result of a complex series of changes that moved the accent leftward in certain circumstances, producing a neoacute accent on the newly stressed syllable. The paradigms below reflect these changes. All languages subsequently simplified the class B paradigms to varying degrees. The older situation can often only be seen in certain nouns in certain languages, or indirectly by way of features such as the Slovene neo circumflex tone that carry echoes of the time when this tone developed. See History of Proto Slavic hashtag Accentual Developments for more details. Topic. Nouns The following tables are examples of Proto-Slavic noun class paradigms, based on Verwege There were many changes in accentuation during the Common Slavic period, and there are significant differences in the views of different scholars on how these changes proceeded. As a result, these paradigms do not necessarily reflect a consensus. The view expressed below is that of the Leiden School, following Frederick Cortland, whose views are somewhat controversial and not accepted by all scholars. Topic. Class A nouns Note that all Class A stems are long. This is because all such stems had Balto-Slavic acute register in the root, which can only occur on long syllables. Short syllables, and long syllables with Balto-Slavic circumflex register, became Class B nouns in Common Slavic. The distribution of short and long vowels in the stems without j reflects the original vowel lengths prior to the operation of Van Veke's law, Debose law, and Stang's law, which led to class B nouns and the differing lengths in j stems. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Class B nouns. Class B ya stem nouns are not listed here. The combination of Van Veke's law and Stang's law would have originally produced a complex mobile paradigm in these nouns, different from the mobile paradigm of a stem and other nouns, but this was apparently simplified in common Slavic times with a consistent neoacute accent on the stem, as if they were class A nouns. The class B Jo stem nouns were also simplified, but less dramatically, with consistent ending stress in the singular but consistent root stress in the plural, as shown. Class B S stem noun are not listed here, because there may not have been any. Topic. Class C nouns The accent pattern for the strong singular cases nominative and, accusative and all plural cases is straightforward. All weak cases genitive, dative, instrumental, locative in the plural are ending stressed. The asterisk a ending that marks the nominative singular of the j a stems and nominative accusative plural of the neuter j o stems is ending stressed. All other strong cases singular and plural are stem stressed. For the weak singular cases, it can be observed. All such cases in the j o stems are stem stressed. All such cases in the j a and i stems are end stressed except the dative, however, the masculine i stem instrumental singular is stem stressed because it is borrowed directly from the jo stem. Note also that the long rising versus short rising accent on ending accented forms with middle common Slavic long vowels reflects original circumflex versus acute register, respectively. <laughs> Verbs The same three classes occurred in verbs as well. Middle Common Slavic class B verbs in asterisk t had a neoacute retraction in late Common Slavic in the present tense, that is, these verbs had original acute accent on the asterisk i inflectional suffix in the infinitive, but neoacute accent on the stem in the present tense. This is due to the same process that caused neoacute retraction in class B ya stem nouns see above. Topic. Reconstructed texts Topic. Schleicher's pie fable rendered into Proto-Slavic 
August Schleicher wrote a fable in the Pi language he had just reconstructed, which though it has been updated a few times by others still bears his name. Below is a rendering of this fable into Proto-Slavic. Proto-Slavic O V C A I Koni, O V C A K, Ya Bez V, L N Y Est, Kone Vid, Edin, T, K, Vos, Tegel, I Edin, Veliko Burme, I S Edin, Kolvika Nosil, B, R Z O. O V, C A Konam, Reese. S. Road, C. E. Mohe Bolet, Videti Kone Z Vozit, Kolvik. Kone Rikos. Slisa G. O. V. C. S. Road, C. A. Nasa Bolet, Kogda Vidim, M. Gospod, O. V. G. Jo V. Leno Jo Seba T. E. P. L. Drab, T. V. Orit. A. O. V. C. A. Bez V. L. N. Y. Est. To slice off, O. V. C. A. V. Dal, Pabiz, English. The sheep and the horses, a sheep that had no wool saw horses, one pulling a heavy wagon, one carrying a big load, and one carrying a man quickly. The sheep said to the horses, My heart pains me, seeing horses carrying a man. The horses said, Listen, sheep, our hearts pain us when we see this, a man, the master, makes the wool of the sheep into a warm garment for himself. And the sheep has no wool. Having heard this, the sheep fled into the plain. Topic. The king and the god rendered into Proto-Slavic Proto-Slavic Kor, est, t, bez, de tet. Kor, sinu zotis. T, r, c, a, s, pro, c. Sinu miyega rod, na zoto. R, c, a, tomu korlu ris. Modli se bogu perunu. T, kor, 9, k, bogu perunu doj, de abai bogu modliti se. Slu si mean, ot si perune. Bog, paran s, nebese s, xodi. To zote? Sinu zoto. Teko body. Ris jar, k, bog, paran. Korla saproga sinu roti, English. Once there was a king. He was childless. The king wanted a son. He asked his priest, May a son be born to me. The priest said to the king, Pray to the god Werunos. The king approached the god Werunos to pray now to the god. Hear me, Father Werunos. The god Werunos came down from heaven. What do you want? I want a son. Let this be so, said the bright god Werunos. The king's lady bore a son. Topic. See also History of the Slavic languages Old Church Slavonic Slavic liquid metathesis and pleophony Slavic languages Balto-Slavic languages Language family Topic. Notes Topic. References Dirksen, Rick 2008, Etymological Dictionary of the Slavic Inherited Lexicon, Leiden Indo-European Etymological Dictionary Series, 4, Leiden, Brill Cortland, Frederick 1994. From Proto-Indo-European to Slavic. PDF, Journal of Indo-European Studies, 22-91-112 Cortland, Frederick 2011. Rise and Development of Slavic Accentual Paradigms. Baltisch und Slavisch Prosody, Frankfurt am Main, Peter Lang, pp. 89-98 Lunt, Horace G. 1987. On the relationship of Old Church Slavonic to the written language of Early Rus. Russian Linguistics, 11-133-162, doi, 10.1007, bf 242073 enacted 4 September 2018 Lunt, Horace G. 2001, Old Church Slavonic Grammar, Mouton de Gruder, ISBN 978-3-11-016284-4 Olander, Thomas. Proto-Slavic Inflectional Morphology, A Comparative Handbook. Leiden, Brill, 2015. Scatton, Ernest 2002. Bulgarian. In Comrie, Bernard, Corbett, Greville. G. The Slavonic Languages, London, Routledge, pp. 188-248, ISBN 978-0-415-28078-5 Schenker, Alexander M. 2002. 
Proto-Slavonic. In Comrie, Bernard, Corbett, Greville. G. The Slavonic Languages, London, Routledge, pp. 60-124, ISBN 978-0-415-28078-5 Stang, C. S. Slavonic Accentuation. Historisk Philosophisk Class, Skrifter Utgat Avenue det Norske Vedenskaps Akademi i Oslo, 2, 3, Oslo, Universitetsforlaget Verweij, Arno Quantity Patterns of Substantives in Czech and Slovak. Dutch Contributions to the 11th International Congress of Slavists, Bratislava, Studies in Slavic and General Linguistics, 22, Editions Roda PBV, pp. 493-564 Further reading In English, Bethen, Christina Yerkew, 1998, Slavic Prosody, Language Change and Phonological Theory, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978 0 521 59148 5. Comrie, Bernard, Corbett, Greville G., eds. 2002, the Slavonic Languages, London, Routledge, ISBN 978 0 415 28078 5. Kurda, Florin. 2004. The Slavic Lingua Franca. Linguistic Notes of an Archaeologist Turned Historian. East Central Europe, L'Europe du Centre Est, 31, 1, 125-148, doi, 10.1163-1876330004x00134. Samilov, Michael. 1964, the Phoneme Jot in Slavic, The Hague, Mouton. Schenker, Alexander M. Proto-Slavonic. In Comrie, Bernard, Corbett, Greville G., The Slavonic Languages, 1 ed., London, New York, Routledge, pp. 60-121, ISBN 978-0-415-04755-5 Sussex, Roland, Cubberly, Paul 2006, The Slavic Languages, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 9780521223 1157 in other languages Belic, Alexander 1921, Najmalada Treka Pramina Zadnanepkana Suglasnika K, Gihu Praslavan Slovenskom Jeziku, Juznoslovenski Philologue in Serbian, 2, 18-39 Brouwer, Herbert 1961, Slavish Sprachwissenschaft, I, Einleitung, Lotler in German, Berlin, Walter de Gruyter and Co., pp. 69-71, 89-90, 99, 138-140 Kaparski, Valentin 1963, 1967, 1975, Russisch Historisch Grammatik in German, 1-3 Lair Splavinsky, Tadeusz 1957, Z. Jizau Jezika Z. Weekse Kalashi, Izikavedski Izledvania v. Sest na Akademik Stefan Miladinov in Polish, Sofia Matasovic, Ranko, 2008, Poredbenopoviezna Grammatica Hrvatskoga Jizika in Croatian, Zagreb, Matica Hrvatska, ISBN 978 953 150 840 7, Milan Mihaljevic, 2002, Slovenska Poredbina Grammatica, 1. Dio, Uvod i Finalahija in Croatian, Zagreb, Skalska Kanhiga, ISBN 978-953-0-30225-9 Mazinski, Leszek Wistep du Filologii Slowianskij, Pone in Polish Valent, Andrei 1950, Grammar Compare des Longs Slaves, T. I. Phonetique in French, Lyon, Paris, IAC, pp. 113-117 Van Wijk, Nicolas 1956, Les Long Slaves, De Lunate à la Pluralité, Genua Linguarum, Series Minor in French 2nd ed. S. Gravenhage, Mouton Vassimer, Max 1950-1958, Rassisches Etymologisches Wörterbuch in German, Heidelberg External links <laughs> 